Welcome to section 8.5b. All right, gentle people, in our last video, what we discussed is we were titrating a strong acid with a strong base. And so what we're gonna do in this lecture is we're gonna do a different scenario. Instead of doing a strong acid, we are gonna have a weak acid in our beaker and we are going to go ahead and titrate in a strong base, meaning I'm going to add little portions of base over some time. So I'm going to set up a particular problem, and this is going to be the example problem for you guys. So I'm going to pick values, but I want you guys to understand the process. So if these values were changed, you can identify the pH at certain points during the titration. So for our weak acid, what we're gonna use is 25 mils of acetic acid. So I want you guys to pretend that this is in my Erlenmeyer flask. Now in my burette, I'm gonna have strong base. I'm gonna use one molar of NaOH. So I'm gonna add little portions of this one molar NaOH to this 25 mils of one molar acetic acid. Now, before I even start titrating, the pH of my acetic acid is going to be 2.4. What I want you guys to do is think about what happens when we add these small portions of NaOH to this Erlenmeyer flask. What is my pH graph going to look like? And so this is going to be the ultimate goal for this lecture and the next lecture. So if you wanna pause the video, you can try to sketch this, what you think is gonna happen. Let's go ahead and do the calculations and let's see how we tackle this type of problem. So the first thing I want you guys to do is tell me what is the initial reaction that I am interested in at the start of this titration. So when I added that first mill of NaOH, what's the reaction that I care about? All right, gentle people, to figure out the reaction that I'm interested in, I need to identify the major species in solution. So the first thing I have in solution is I have my acetic acid. Now my acetic acid, I told you was a weak acid, so I'm gonna draw my equilibrium arrows. I'm gonna go ahead and write out what it breaks up into, but I know because it's a weak acid that this, is the major species. It is the acetic acid fully intact. Now into the solution, I am adding NaOH. Now NaOH, strong base, so it's going to break up into Na plus and OH minus. Because I use that hard arrow, and because this is a strong base, the fully broken up or the fully dissociated NaOH, Na plus and OH minus, that's the major species in solution. And then lastly, as always, water is a major species because that's the media I'm working in. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what our strongest acid is. That's going to be CH3COOH, my acetic acid. And then if I were to look for my strongest base, well, that's gonna be OH minus the strongest base. Now, if I take a look at this, remember OH minus is a strong entity. Because it's a strong entity, I'm not gonna use the equilibrium arrow. I'm gonna use my hard arrow and I'm gonna let my base donate that proton and I'm gonna finally create water out of that scenario. So this is the reaction that I'm gonna be interested in. Okay. Now that we've got the reaction we're interested in, we are gonna do one more thing before I tackle this problem. And that is, I wanna figure out what the equivalence point is. So to remind you guys, this particular problem setup has this amount of acid with this amount of base. And so to find the equivalence point, remember that's the moles of acid equaling the moles of base. What I can do is I can use this formula right here. MV equals MV. Now I only want you to use this equation when your acid and base are in a one-to-one -one ratio. And we saw in the reaction that we've written 
that indeed we have a one-to-one -one ratio between our acid and our base. Now, if it is a one-to-one, -one, we can simply go ahead and plug in values. We're gonna plug in the molarity of our acid and our base and the volumes of our acid, and we're gonna solve for the volume of the base that we need to add. And so in this case, I can rearrange my equation so that I isolate the volume of my base I know that my molarities are one molar each and that the volume of my acid is 25 mils. So it turns out that my equivalence point is 25 mils. Now with my equation identified and my equivalence point, I'm gonna say that there are three different places in your titration curve and these three different places in your titration curve, the way that you solve the pH is gonna be slightly different. There's gonna be before the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, and then after the equivalence point. So these are the three different scenarios that you can have. And once you've identified the equivalence point, you can tell if you're before, at, or after, and then you can go ahead and use the methodologies that I'm about to show you to solve for the pH. So let's look at the first scenario. The first scenario we're gonna cover is before the equivalence point. So remember, we just calculated the equivalence point for this particular reaction to be 25 mils. So what that means is that this method that I'm about to show you is good for one mil, two mil, three mils, all the way up to about 24 mils. Now I could run through this problem with any volume between what I've shown you here, but I'm just gonna pick one example. I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and pretend that I have added only five mils of this one molar NaOH. And this is just gonna be an example. You guys can run through the other amounts that I've shown you on this table. So if I just add five mils, which is less than the 25 mils to get to my equivalence point, what happens is this problem breaks down into two parts. I first have to run a stoichiometry problem, which means I have to do a surf table. And then after my surf table, I'm gonna have an equilibrium problem, which means that I'm gonna run through an ice table. So let's go ahead and set all these up. Okay, gentle people, here is my scenario. I have 25 mils of my acetic acid, and I go ahead and only add five mils of NaOH at this point. So remember, my acetic acid is providing my acetic acid, that's the major species. My NaOH is providing my OH minus. So I'm gonna do a surf table first, because that's how I told you to how to solve these problems. So what I need is the moles of each one of these things. So the moles of my acetic acid is going to be M times V. So the molarity times the volume, and what I will get out is the moles of my acetic acid. I'm gonna do the same thing for OH minus by plugging in the NaOH values. All right, once we've got that up, we can go ahead and set up our surf table. So remember, we already identified the reaction with our strongest acid plus our base going to completion, getting us acetate plus water. So I'm gonna put SRF, start reaction final. So let's go ahead and plug in our initial values. So 0 0.025, 0 0.005. I have no acetate at the start and I don't care about water. So again, we're going to go ahead and do our reaction. So we're gonna look for our limiting reagent. And what we can see is that our OH minus is our limiting reagent. So let's go ahead and subtract that amount from our reactant side. And then on our product side, we are gonna go ahead and add that amount. So I can do my final amounts by going ahead and adding S plus R.
And so these are the final amounts that you should get in moles. Now, remember, this is a two-part problem. We figured out our surf table. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do an ice table. Now, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and convert our final amounts to molarity. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that right now, this is in moles. And to get to molarity, I need to divide by the total volume. The total volume is going to be the addition of these two amounts. So I have to divide everything by 30 mils or 0 0.03 liters. So if I go ahead and do that, I can get my concentration in molarity. So the values that I'm going to calculate out, 0 0.6667 molar. This is still 0 molar, and this is 0 0.16667 molar. Now that I've got everything calculated out in concentrations, I can move to my ice table. Now for your ice table, what you want to do is you want to take whatever the weak entity is, in this case acetic acid, and you want to write the equilibrium that it partakes in. So if I have a weak acid, I know that I have to write my acid reaction. If this was a weak base that I was titrating, then I would write my base reaction. But since this is an acid, let's write my acid reaction down. And so in this case, I'm going to write my ice table, ICE. And then for my initial amounts, well, I just calculated those out. So 0 0.6667, my acetate, 0 0.16667. I don't have any H plus in the solution. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So this gets a 0. Since one of my products is a 0, plus X, plus X minus x and then finally i can go ahead and write e so this is going to be 0.6667 minus x this is going to be 0 0.16667 plus x and this is finally going to be x again you guys are expected to go to your ka tables to help you find out what x is going to be so in this case, my Ka, I look up for acetic acid. It is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I go ahead and put my products. So in this case, my 0 0.16667 plus X times X. And then I divide it by my reactants. So that's going to be 0 0.6667 minus X. Now, the thing that we note is that my Ka is really small. So I can go ahead and simplify this expression to be 0 0.16667 times x divided by 0 0.6667. Now, if I go ahead and do this, I can solve for x. x in this case is going to be 7.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then finally, what I can do is I can get the pH of this. So remember that this X equals my H plus concentration, which you guys can see in my ice table. And so I can take the negative log of my H plus concentration to get my pH. So I'm gonna input this value and what I get is a pH of 4.14. So what you guys can see is I did it for five mils. I got that pH of 4.14. You guys can test it out and ask yourself, what would the pH be if I added 10, 11, 12, all the way up to that equivalence point at 25 mils. So this takes care of one of the three scenarios before, at, or after the equivalence point. In the next lecture, we're gonna tackle the other two scenarios. So remember the premise of the problem, and we are going to continue our discussion. I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Can one be.